Yes, T20 Med Schools reject thousands of 4.0, 520 plus MCATs every year. They truly have a 1.5% acceptance rate. When I applied, I felt there was no way I was in the top one in 100. Today, I'm happy to say that I graduated from UCLA Medical School and I'm now an anesthesiology resident in New York City. And over the last seven years, I've helped our students also get into top 20 schools. So today I'll show the truth about their acceptance rates and I'll show you how to figure out if you actually have a chance. Part number one, the 98.5% rejection rate. This number comes from MSAR data. Last year, 11,326 pre-meds applied to UCLA. They interviewed 646 or 5.7%. And ultimately, 177 or 1.5% were accepted. That gives us a 98.5% rejection rate. And most T20s have a similar story. Now, just because 98.5% of pre-meds were rejected does not mean that you have a 98.5% chance of not getting in. This is population-based data, and it describes populations, not individuals. We can get more nuanced and analyze the data based on your unique attributes. And I'll give you two examples. Example number one, let's say you live in California. 4,783 pre-meds applied in-state, and ultimately 104 or 2.2% were accepted. 60% of UCLA's class came from California and the remaining 40%, that comes from everywhere else, the 49 states plus international students. Example number two, let's say you didn't take a gap year. In 2022, 38 or 25% of their first year med students were between 19 and 23 years old. 112 or 75% were between 24 and 29, which meant that they took at least one gap year. Of course, this is correlational data. I'm not telling you that you're three times more likely to go to UCLA if you took time off. But I am telling you that there's more nuance than a blanket 98.5% rejection rate for all comers. If you're a California applicant with stats higher than their medians and you took some meaningful time off, your chances are likely more than 1.5%. Now, ultimately, you will get in or you won't. And so it's important to know what exactly it takes to get into a top 20 like UCLA. In our application database, you'll find three entire students, now doctors, who are all graduates from UCLA. You'll see their stats, their most meaningful extracurriculars, their personal stats statements, every single thing that got them in. There's no better resource for pre-meds who want to get into some of the best medical schools in the country. Over 18,500 pre-meds are part of our community. To join, click the application database link in our description box below now. Part two, objects are closer than they appear. What if I told you that I could predict which T20 med school you would get into? Well, Harry got into Cleveland Clinic and Andrea got into the University of Washington. There are a couple secrets I've learned over the years. Secret number one, the 1.5% acceptance rate is scary. Yes, but that's all pre-meds. And it certainly doesn't mean all qualified. When you remove the thousands of applications that have red flags or truly aren't even in the stat range, the acceptance rate becomes much more reasonable. Figure number two, UCLA's median MCAT is 515. Their median GPA is 3.86. If you're applying with a 3.97 GPA 519 MCAT like I did, there's actually 12,843 pre-meds with that same exact stat portfolio over the last three years. Remember, UCLA only has 100 seats. And if there are thousands of pre-meds with perfect stats, there must be more to the equation. At that stage, schools are looking more for mission fit, not max stats. So if you're targeting Stanford, think of a profile that features innovation, tech, and entrepreneurship. If you're targeting UCLA, think health equity and community engagement. If you're looking at Columbia, think systems leadership and urban health. So when pre-meds say that they're aiming for T20s, they're a bit misguided. To be competitive for any school at that level, you must have built a clear narrative that resonates with each of these T20s unique missions. And later, we're going to talk about how to calculate your chances of getting into a T20 school. I'm going to break that down into three simple steps. But before that, if you're applying to medical school in the coming year or two, you don't want to make any mistakes. Our pre-med catalyst students who submit their applications on time have a 100% acceptance rate. That's more than double the national average. And our results are only because we work so closely with students. In fact, we can only take four students per month until we're full. If you'd be interested in getting into some of the top 20 medical schools in the country, click the application cycle advising link down below now to book a free strategy call before we're full for the cycle. Part three, you live in a lie. 
If you spend 10 minutes on SDN, you'll see posts that'll have you lose all hope. 3.95 GPA and 522 is maybe just below average. And here's another example. 4.0 GPA, 524 MCAT, hired a professional admissions advisor, interviewed at 10 places and rejected or waitlisted at seven of them. I'm here to say, snap out of it. Remember that what you see on Reddit or SDN are outliers. This is not normal. Remember, 83% of students with stats like those got in somewhere. You're certainly not guaranteed to get into a T20, but the odds are much higher than 1.5%. Mind yourself, when you see one pre-med that's crashing out, you don't see the other five that got into UCSF, NYU, and Harvard. Don't buy into the neuroticism. I understand that it feels scary because if they didn't get in, how could you? But this is not reality. This is a lie. It's an inverse survivorship bias, a negativity bias. You will always only hear the loudest, the low stat pre-med who got into Harvard, the perfect stat pre-med that got in nowhere. But the reality is all the gray scale in between. Don't get fooled by your limited perspective. Part four, let's calculate your T20 odds. Step number one, know your data. Table A23 gives correlational data based on your stats. The AMC facts report gives you more data based on your specific demographic, school, or region. Let's say you have a 3.85 GPA and a 512 MCAT. 66.7% of people with your stats earned at least one acceptance. Your home state is New York. Your odds are probably a touch lower because of all the competitive pre-meds there. Step number two, lever up lever down. There are only six levers that you can control that changes your admissions odds. Your GPA, your MCAT, your extracurriculars, your letters of recommendation, your school list, and then your writing and interview. Table A23 will take care of your GPA and MCAT, and then you have to evaluate your other levers. Let's say you took a look at our application database and your research is actually stronger than those who got into UCLA. That raises your 66.7% probably a touch higher. Then evaluate your clinical experience. Maybe it's on par. Then are your letter writers generic or are you confident that they will move heaven and earth to get you a white coat? This gets you a little bit more precision. Step number three, not all schools are made equal. Remember, you may have that 66.7, say 70% chance of earning a acceptance. Now, if we're targeting T20 schools, you'll need to tack on that extreme mission alignment. If you apply to Einstein with an application that resonates with Stanford's, your odds are lower. You're lowering your odds for Einstein and you're putting your eggs in that Stanford basket. If you have a 3.92 GPA, 521 MCAT from New York with strong extracurriculars in urban health and health policy, you're most likely to get into somewhere like Columbia, NYU, Cornell, Einstein, Boston University places that care about the same things you do. You're less likely to get into Stanford, or Vanderbilt, or UCSF. Ultimately, the goal isn't to pin down one exact number. If I told you your chances to getting into Stanford were 22% as opposed to 18%, would that change any of your behavior? Would it make a meaningful difference? I don't think so. And so at Pre-Med Catalyst, we take these same exact three steps to give families an estimate. Then we layer on all the pre-meds that we've worked with in the past, especially for T20 schools where mission alignment is everything. You need to know whether your application is pretty close to Steve's who got a full ride at UCLA or Ben who also has a full ride at the Cleveland Clinic. That's how we make the most accurate prediction of where you're most competitive. Now that you know the truth about T20 med schools, you'll want to know what ad comms value most. Here's a video about what they can't stand but don't always share. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.